Yeah, I mean, like for one thing, if you if you Google your name, the first thing you see is all these random weird little blogs that are like hit pieces on you <laughs> and who you are. Like you're a womanizer, you're this terrible person, you abandon your family, right? And all this stuff. So these are all websites created by these people, right? To and they put and a they pay stain on your name. They pay for them to be at the top of searches on my name, like. They spend tax-exempt dollars on that shit and on hiring private investigators to go through my trash or set up cameras outside my house or put GPS tracking devices on my cars or show up. Like, I have been all over the world since I left Scientology. Like, I went to England a couple of times because I was interviewed by the BBC. There would be... Scientology protesters there. I went to Australia to be interviewed by Brian Seymour at Channel 7. They sent private investigators on the plane with me what? who followed me around in Australia with cameras. I went to Ireland. They had protesters at the airport when I landed in Ireland. This, The amount of money that gets spent on this is insane. And it is actually being subsidized by taxpayers because Scientology has tax-exempt status. So that money is not only tax-free, it's not, there's no accounting for it. There is no oversight of what Scientology spends its money on. Right, there's absolutely zero regulation on them. Nope, and there is no way for the IRS even to require or go in and do an audit or require them to report nothing there is a there is a law in the united states called the church audits procedures act which basically prevents the irs from doing anything with a religious organization now explain that what was that like that whole the whole fight to get the tax to get scientology to be tax exempt because i know there was there was two stages of it, right? Obviously, the first stage, which led to the FBI raids and all that stuff early on, where they found out what Scientology was trying to do. But then, again, there was the whole thing with all the lawsuits that were filed. What was, how did that whole war against the IRS come about? And what was that, what was it like being in your position doing that? Okay. Um, that war against the IRS came about partly because of the dictates of L. Ron Hubbard, who, you want water, you water for you. Thanks, who said that, you know, the IRS is an enemy and taxation is bad and blah, 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 because they had denied Scientology tax-exempt status early. Originally, they granted it and then denied it, saying that money was being funneled to Hubbard and that was what's called inurement, which is a violation. You can't have a person benefiting from something that is tax exempt, like personally. Right. You, you can be paid, you know, the head of National Geographic gets paid even though it's a tax exempt organization. But if the head of National Geographic was getting huge royalties from the sale of National Geographic stuff, right, right. that would not, that would, eliminate their qualification for tax exemption. When L. Ron Hubbard died, he had a will, and his will said that the money that he had accumulated and the rights to his writings, which were both fiction and the Scientology writings, which are all copyrighted, every single word that he ever wrote is copyrighted and royalties are paid on by every Church of Scientology and every sale of every book, that all of that money and that revenue stream were to go to an organization that was dedicated to preserving his technology. And technology is a term that Hubbard used to describe his writings and the scripture of Scientology. And he used technology because he always tried to present Scientology as very scientific. Mm -hmm. This isn't belief. This is where religion meets science. You may have seen some of the ads that Scientology does. They do one a year, usually, at the Super Bowl. And one of the lines they Do they run, really? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a Scientology Super Bowl ad. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. 
I wish we could pull. I wish we had. I wish I had one. I could see. But that's that's. Insane. Oh, you can find them online. Easy. Yeah. Just Google Scientology Super Bowl ad. They're like every year. That's unbelievable. And you'll see that they often say this is where science meets religion. You know, this is the the culmination of Eastern philosophy and Western material. I mean, yeah. all this stuff. Anyway, Hubbard called this stuff technology. Okay. And he decreed in his will that he, this his money f that he had accumulated, you know, a few hundred million dollars, I guess, and the revenue streams from future, because those, those royalties continue to be paid, were to vest in an organization which is called the Church of Spiritual Technology. And the Church of Spiritual Technology was an organization that was established to preserve the writings and recorded lectures of L. Ron Hubbard on stainless steel, etched into stainless steel, stored in titanium pods <laughs> in nuclear-proof vaults dug into the side of mountains. I know that sounds really bizarre, but that is Hubbard's legacy. He wanted his materials to survive what he said was the coming nuclear holocaust on planet Earth so that future civilizations, it would still be available to them. They could dig this shit up out of the, the vaults, and there it would be, all preserved wonderfully. And this has been hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent putting, you know, his millions and millions of words and thousands of lectures onto indest into into indestructible form and buried in vaults in New Mexico and in California. Okay. That's like I said, I digress a lot because there's right. so much to these things. The requirement for that to happen was that the Church of Spiritual Technology had to have tax exempt status because he didn't want his estate to be paying taxes on the transfer of the money to the organization. Okay. Okay. The IRS refused to grant tax-exempt status to the Church of Spiritual Technology, and Scientology sued and lost. And at that point, David Miscavige, who was now responsible for conducting the affairs of Scientology and carrying out the wishes of L. Ron Hubbard in his will, had a problem. There was this estate sitting there with hundreds of millions of dollars with orders to preserve the technology, mm -hmm. and he didn't have a way of getting that done. And Scientologists believe that when you die, you come back again in another body mm -hmm. and Miscavige was worried that Hubbard was coming back and would be like what the fuck dude how come you haven't gotten this done he thought that his spirit or what they call it Thetan his yeah. Thetan spirit would somehow after he died they, they said that it left his body and he went to do research as just a spirit and that he truly believed he would come back into a, a human meat sack and yes, and Hubbard had written, here is how you will know who I am. This is how I will be identifiable. Really? Yes. And how is that? How, how I have you? no idea. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. Um, but, but that then started what was seriously the war on the IRS. If we can't get the IRS to agree to granting tax exempt status to the Church of Spiritual Technology, and we can't get the courts to agree, we are going to force the IRS to agree. And this is where fair game comes in. Because mm. what happened was a very, very intense campaign was conducted against the IRS and against individual agents in the IRS and in the hierarchy of the IRS that were responsible for tax exempt or religious tax exempt organizations. Okay. 
And there were, a, like you talk about these smear sites back in the day, that was it was sort of pre-internet, but there were magazines that Scientology published called Freedom Magazine. And these people were put on the cover of Freedom Magazine. Private investigators were sent into IRS conventions and documented IRS agents getting drunk at conventions. They sent women in. Like everything that you can th- – and filed a 1,000 lawsuits against the – well, let me back up. Part of the strategy was to request freedom of information information make freedom of information requests to all IRS offices around the country. And to, because what happens when, when you get a, a, a document release under freedom of information, you see right. they're blacked out. Mm-hmm. But the same document may be in five different offices and you'll get different blackouts from different offices. Okay. And if you've got enough people, which Scientology has plenty of people and plenty of money, you can sit and compare all these and and start noticing, okay, here's the, the this line was blacked out on this document that we got from San Antonio, but the same line is not blacked out on the document we got from Sacramento. So, now we know that that and now we also know that this was a bullshit blackout. What was? Why were they? What were they blacking out? They black out uh, names of people or things that they think are protecting confidential informants or okay. like there's all sorts of things that are justified in okay. blacking out in a in a Freedom of Information Act document. Okay. So what happened was Scientology filed lawsuits where they refused to provide documents or where they provided documents that were differently vetted. Okay. And ultimately ended up with about a thousand and filed lawsuits on behalf of individual Scientology parishioners who had had their deductions to Scientology denied. They paid money to Scientology and claimed it as a deduction. Got it. Yep. They were denied, Mm -hmm. so they filed individual lawsuits. And who told them to do this? The Office of Special Affairs. You? Yeah. Okay. Well, not me personally, but people that work for me, and this was all part of the campaign that was directed by David Miscavige to force the IRS into what's called a more amenable frame of mind. (laughs) And that is one of Hubbard's writings where he takes a thing from this from either Sun Tzu or Clausewitz, Out of War, On War, these books that he studied that he then laid out these directives for Scientology to follow and Mm -hmm. said the the aim of war is to get your enemy into a more amenable frame of mind. And that was the objective with the IRS, get them into a more amenable frame of mind. Mm -hmm. 